He always believed his party's time would come. For three decades, Christian Ströbele has been a popular lawmaker for the Greens, with a large following in his Berlin constituency. A steady stream of people visit his office asking about climate protection, educational policy and the anti-nuclear movement, three of the party's bedrock issues. Even without us commenting or having to do much, the omnipresence of these issues makes people automatically think of the Greens. Everyone associates the issues with us thinking, oh sure, the Greens have always said that. Which is why the party's leaders have been appearing at the forefront of various citizens' protests. Many Germans are dissatisfied, and not just with the center-right government's acquiescence toward nuclear energy. It's a welcome opportunity for the Greens. Pollsters have been watching the Greens gather support from all segments of the political spectrum. Their importance has grown each time other parties' credibility has come into question, especially the three governing parties, the CDU, CSU and FDP. When it comes to credibility, the Greens have set themselves a bit apart from the others. The Greens have made credibility a priority ever since they entered Parliament in 1983. Principles counted more than popularity. Today, their supporters are from mainstream society. They include many affluent urbanites, socially conscious consumers who tend to live in the trendiest neighborhoods of major cities. In next year's elections for state parliament in Berlin, the Greens could become the city-state's strongest party. Their candidate for mayor is most likely to be Renate Künast, currently co-parliamentary party leader. She's visiting Baden-Württemberg, where the Greens are demonstrating against an expensive new rail project with their new supporters. The country's middle class has changed. People in their 40s who follow their principles, who don't just think me, but we, who do something for their country, these people have been increasingly turning to the Greens. Pragmatic Greens like financial expert Gerhard Schick are urging the party to expand its platform. He says taxation and social policy can no longer be left to other parties. People are asking if the Greens have something to say in only a few fashionable issues or whether they have something to offer everyone. They're wondering if we have the competence for them to trust us to work well in government. Economic and financial policy is always key there. That's why the Greens have to have a clear profile in these areas. Party co-leader Cem Özdemir is working to burnish that profile, establishing contacts with business associations and top executives to win them over to the party's ideas for sustainable business. The Greens say coalitions with the Conservatives aren't unthinkable, but Conservative support for nuclear power can't be reconciled with Green principles. I greatly regret that because I think Democratic Party should be capable of speaking and working together. But it was the Conservatives, not us, who shut the door. Whether partners and compromises will be inevitable to change society is a debate that, in their current surge, the Greens are putting off. If we fight to become the strongest party and we succeed, the coalition question will take quite a different form than if we, as a junior party, were joining together with the bigger party. In a governing party, a senior governing party, I'm under much more pressure, have to accept compromises and defend them in front of others. Those are entirely new challenges, some of which the Greens already know, but only as a junior coalition member. So I can understand the fears of some Green leaders. When you climb this high, you can fall that far too. The Greens have arrived in Germany's political center. How they're planning to pay back the trust voters are giving them is a question that remains to be answered.